Hello, I want to welcome you back to our seventh Institute Encounter, a series of interviews we do with uh, visiting speakers here uh, on the, at the Texas Tech campus. Uh, our speaker today, we're very grateful to have him, is uh, Dr. John Agresto, uh, who has done a great many things in the course of his life to advance the cause of learning and liberal learning in particular. Uh, he, for many years, was the president of the leading great books college in the United States, uh, St. John's College uh, at its Santa Fe campus. Uh, he has served, uh, served for 15 months uh, as acting chairman of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, he was part of the uh, American Occupation Force uh, in Iraq, in which his chief responsibility was getting uh, the Iraqi higher education system uh, back in operation. Uh, and then after that, he served as president of the American University in Iraq, uh, located in Sulaymaniyah, uh, in, in northern uh, Kurdish Iraq. So he has been forwarding uh, the great project of liberal education in a great many different contexts and settings, um, exporting it uh, to places like Iraq, but of course that raises the question of to what extent we actually have it here. Um, <laughs> and so uh, a lot of folks uh, think that when they graduate uh, from a college or university in the United States and they proudly hold that sheepskin up, uh, that they have thereby gotten a liberal education. Uh, do you think that's generally true? You and I both know it's not true, Steve. <laughs> it's not true at all. Uh, begin by saying, though, uh, liberal education isn't the only kind of education, and other kinds of education are very valuable. Uh, and so I don't want anything I say pro-liberal education be seen as anti-technical uh, education, professional education, vocational education. I think, you know, if, if you want to become a, anything from a, a, a doctor or a cabinet maker or a nurse to a, a farmer, I mean, God bless you, those are wonderful things to learn. Uh, and uh, uh, now I do think that everyone uh, should be offered the opportunity, no matter what their profession, to get some background in uh, the history of the West, uh, art and music, literature, uh, philosophy, or the main subjects of the, of the liberal arts. Uh, but in defending literature and philosophy and history, I don't mean to denigrate at all uh, uh, professional or vocational uh, training. How I wish I was a cabinet maker. You don't know how I wish I was a good cabinet maker. Uh, but to answer the question, uh, when you graduate, do you get a liberal? Do you have a liberal arts degree in any way? Have you had a liberal education? Generally speaking, no, you haven't. You and, is, and, haven't. And, and, and and is that is that? But we'll get to what liberal education is momentarily. But uh, is that necessarily a bad thing? Uh, is liberal education for everybody? I don't. I. I, as I said, started to say before, I think everybody should be offered some liberal education. I think, I think everyone, uh, whether or not at the time they're being educated, will appreciate the fact that they've learned some history, uh, learned some art, some music. Uh, uh, whether or not they appreciate it, they will at some point say, uh, gee, I'm really glad I took that course. I'm really glad I've read uh, X, Y, or Z. Uh, I'm really glad I've read some Shakespeare, you know? Uh, uh, I, in my experience, especially when I was at St. John's, uh, how many people who uh, only got a little bit of a liberal arts education when they went to college, university, want to go, what they want to do is go back, they don't always want to go back and retrain their skills mm -hmm. uh, in this or that field. What they want is, can I go back and just, the stuff I, I sort of ignored when I was an undergraduate, the philosophy classes, the literature classes, history classes. Gee, can I go back and take a course at St. John's on Shakespeare? Or can I take a course on the history of the American Revolution? Uh, those things are f even more, f so, and sometimes I think liberal education is wasted on the young, although you have to have it for the young because uh, yeah, they have to have something to build on. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but uh, is it for everyone? 
I think uh, not everyone will appreciate it. Uh, everyone should be allowed to be exposed to it. Everyone should have basis of it offered to them. And for some people, it really is the finest thing they can do. Justice Potter Stewart famously said of pornography, you know it when you see it. Mm -hmm. Now, apparently that's not true in the case of liberal education because all sorts of claims are made for delivering it uh, when, I think in your opinion, it's probably not there. Um, so what, what do you look for uh, in a, uh, an undergraduate education uh, to see if it really is providing that liberal education element? I mean, the easiest way to go and the way we generally go is look at what, we, what the courses that are being offered. It may not be the best way, but if you uh, are taking uh, history courses, courses in literature, not, not a course that says, you know, write what you did this summer, uh, uh, but of course where you're really reading fine literature, uh, where you're learning a, a language, ancient, modern language, uh, uh, where you're uh, learning philosophy, you're learning what some of the greatest thinkers have thought and why they thought it and what arguments they made. If you're learning how to uh, think about important things in a serious way, uh, then you're in the field of the liberal arts. If you're learning not what is or what could be, but learning how to do or to make, uh, then you're in the then you're in not you're in a different kind of education. Uh, uh, if we used to say if you're learning the humanities uh, or the arts, uh, you're in the uh, you're in the field of the liberal. What about arts. the social sciences? Some parts of the social sciences, yes. Some parts, no. Uh, and uh, and uh, and there are many. Uh, it's history of liberal art or social sciences, the humanities or social science. It's kind of a sterile debate. Uh, but if you're learning history, uh, you're learning something that is now considered to be a firm part of the liberal arts. Uh, we used to worry about you know, sociology, a sociology part of the liberal arts. I gave a talk last night where I talked about the, the sociology of culture and the importance of, of understanding society. Uh, more and more I think we're understanding sociology, anthropology, psychology to actually themselves be part of the liberal arts. There are of course some people who think that ultimately liberal arts could be reduced to, in some significant measure, to science. Do you think that's true? Oh, to science. That's for cognitive science, for example, as a way of understanding culture. Uh, see, I always have fights with my friends who think that the, that the uh, liberal arts could be reduced to philosophy. And I'm trying to say, no, 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 that's, that's not the whole of the liberal arts. Uh, uh, yeah, it's an important part, but it's not all of it. Uh, no, I never thought of that, you reduce all of the liberal arts to cognitive okay. psychology. Okay, all right, okay. Um, well, uh, so it's, it's about high culture, uh, it's about the human story, kind yes. of considered broadly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about transcendental things, those things that maybe extend beyond culture or unite culture in some meaningful way with the rest of natural reality. Uh, it's the big questions. It's the big questions. Not and necessarily the big answers, because well, it's hard to come by the answers, but the big questions. Yeah, but I don't want to cite the answers. I mean, I always I get a little uneasy. I say, well, you know, the liberal arts have to do with questioning. Well, the liberal arts also have to do with the search for answers. But if the answers are never there, then you guys would just bang your head against the wall mm -hmm. at some point. Uh, no, I really think there may be alternative answers, but there are answers. And that's the nice thing about the liberal arts. I mean, the, uh, uh, the Greeks and Romans had real answers to how they thought we should live. I think America has real answers to how it thinks we should live. I think Western civilization has given us real answers. It's not scattershot. These answers are real alternatives. But they're, they're not dispositive answers that clearly settle things in most cases, are they? Not always, not always. Are there uh, some examples of that? Uh, I think if you went through the, let's go back to philosophy, mm -hmm. you went through the history of moral philosophy, mm -hmm. I think, you know, some things get settled on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and even things that seem to be on the periphery of philosophy, you know, do things really exist? I think we've settled that. Yeah, things really exist. Uh, uh, if you want to believe otherwise, knock yourself out. But, you know, yeah, that things do get settled. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, even when we do, we talk about culture, even when we do cultural studies, cross-cultural studies, uh, uh, while all cultures might think justice is different depending on where, uh, 
even when you look at them, you have to say, there are some things that they understand have to be right in all times and places. Uh, now, how these get interpreted, uh, or what, you know, that, that one should directly and willfully kill the innocent. Probably in all times and places, uh, uh, not, 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 not an acceptable mode of thought. Uh, what comprises innocence and what comprises direct killing may be different. Uh, but unless you have some background in the liberal arts, you're not going to have an intelligent discussion about this with the person who might think otherwise from you. Uh, you have to have, uh, you know, the liberal arts give you important issues to think about in serious ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the liberal arts are not frou-frou. The liberal arts aren't, uh, aren't, you know, culture understood as adornment. Uh, you know, you don't go to the liberal arts to find out how to have cocktail party chatter about, oh, I just saw a Shakespeare play, it was Darling. Uh, baloney, you know. Uh, I Could be of some help in those situations. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you don't need help on cocktail party chatter. <laughs> just have another martini, you'll be, you'll be fine. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, you want to have serious thoughts about serious issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in, in, hard, uh, in hard times. We always live in hard times. The world is always, uh, you know, uh, uh, not a, uh, you know, doesn't work the way you, we probably should all the time. We need serious people thinking serious thoughts about how can we, how can we live our lives in an intelligent mm -hmm. and good way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, uh, and I think the liberal arts help us think those things through. Now, would it, would it be fair to say that the some of the more recent trends in academic life um, and in cultural thought uh, don't share the premises of liberal education. For example, um, does multiculturalism uh, share premises? Is, could that be part of liberal education too, or is it uh, at odds with it? There's, there's a way in which things that we would call multiculturalism are so silly and so uh, uh, that, that uh, we're going to find out uh, all about other cultures and celebrate other cultures and uh, uh, and are again that's on the level of isn't that charming? Uh, uh, but there's a way in which multiculturalism is important. I want to find out what other cultures think. I want to find out why they think it. I want to find out what uh, uh, what. Uh, Islamic culture thinks and why it thinks it and does it act as it thinks and if it does I have to know what it thinks and why it thinks. Uh, I have to be able to engage with that uh, and so if someone said oh we should read the Quran that's a different culture that baloney read it understand it take it seriously. Uh, uh, we no one would have thought that we shouldn't take communism seriously or that we shouldn't take fascism seriously, uh, take Imperial Japan seriously, take these things seriously. Radically different cultures than our own. Uh, uh, and in some cases, uh, cultures that, uh, uh, let's say if we study the Greeks or the Romans, cultures that might even help inform ours to make ours better. And in some cultures, communism, fascism, things that are our antagonists, things that if they won would make the world worse. Uh, uh, and so uh, notice that I don't think that all cultures are equal or that there are such things that are good and bad. is cosmopolitan and comparative at least to some extent. It's not just a Western tradition. Well, the nice thing about the Western tradition is that it is itself a cosmopolitan culture. And so uh, uh, it's not just that you know Americans come from all over the world. That what has made America is uh, you know, Hebrew Bible, uh, Roman and, and Greek traditions, Roman law, uh, uh, British understanding of, of law and equality. Uh, you name it. It comes from all over and builds the civilization up. Uh, but then again, that's not to say we're just a sponge. There's a lot we reject. Uh, uh, and in, even in the world today, there's a lot we have to. But we're not going to reject things before we understand them. Could you could you imagine um, a university campus in China, uh, in which the humanities would largely be the humanities of the Chinese tradition? Uh, would you imagine that as being an exercise in, in liberal education too? This is an interesting point. Uh, I have a a lot of my purest liberal arts friends. 
uh, who think that liberal arts should not be connected to the culture they're in. I don't think they're right. Uh, these are my friends who think that philosophy is everything. Uh, uh, I think one of the values of the liberal arts is it teaches you to appreciate what great men and women in your culture have done. Uh, so that if there was a liberal arts university in China and they didn't read Milton, okay. But if they didn't read Confucius, I would say that, that they're missing something. One of the values of the liberal arts is not only to liberate you and to liberate your mind, but to give you an appreciation of the civilization. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so the liberal arts are both a, a thing that cuts through and, and makes you sharper, and it's also a thing that makes you uh, appreciate. Uh, uh, that if, uh, I, I even know uh, liberal arts uh, uh, programs where they say, uh, uh, the liberal arts uh, uh, teaches you how to think, uh, critical thinking, that's what we're really all about. Uh, and, uh, and so the fine arts, uh, the works of civilization, works of beauty, uh, uh, no, no, that's not really the liberal arts. Baloney, baloney. You have to have uh, an understanding not only of the wisdom of Shakespeare, but of the beauty of Shakespeare. Uh, and that's the nice thing about the liberal arts, that it really gives you a, uh, you become a, a shareholder of your culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and your culture has, uh, especially if it's a good culture like Western civilization, it, it, it gives you such riches mm -hmm. that you can now be part of. It's kind of high acculturation. A high acculturation. Uh, and, uh, and, and the nice thing about the liberal arts properly understood, it isn't just anything. You say, well, you know, should I uh, comic book culture or Shakespeare? Uh, uh, American Idol culture or Milton. Uh, no, I take Shakespeare. Well, I think there are classrooms now in which the American Idol and yeah. comic books are, are, are taught. And the um, truth is, it's kind of silly. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of silly. I mean, are, are, can't they be art forms in their own right? Graphic uh, novels? Well, so? So yeah, let's call them art forms. You know, there's going to be good art, bad art, high art, medium art, low art, vulgar art, trashy art, uh, spectacular so art. So maybe there are some classics of graphic novels. There may well be classics of graphic novels, and if you Miles, want to, something if, like yeah, that. and if you no think, and if you want to spend your time, Steve, studying those things, <laughs> be my guest. As I say, back in Brooklyn, knock yourself out. Go ahead. But uh, what, what, what about? I mean, people often also say that we have in the academy nowadays something called relativism associated with postmodernism, the notion that everything is constructed up for grabs, there aren't any fundamentals. Do you see that as a genuine issue uh, in the academy for those who want to get back to or continue the tradition of liberal education as you understand it? Here's where I disagree with so many of my fellow uh, liberal arts buddies. They look at relativism and they say it's killing the liberal arts. You know uh, that you know uh, uh, Shakespeare is as good as, uh, or, or that uh, Rembrandt's as good as whatever uh, me or my kids put on the refrigerator door. You know, the, uh, and you know well, who's to say who's to say what's better and worse? Uh, actually, smart people have to say what's better and worse. Uh, people have thought about these things and make good arguments. But put that aside. Uh, uh, Who's to say? Uh, is all things the same? All things equal? The truth is, if people really believe that, it would be a danger. I have never in my life met a relativist. I have never met a person who doesn't say, uh, my way is more correct than your way. Uh, all these relativists out there seem to say, oh, all cultures are, are, are equal. Except Western Civ, that's really bad. You know, all ways of life are, are charming, are good, are worthy of note, except the American civilization. It's, it's bad. Uh, show me a relativist someday. Show me a person who really says, yeah, it's all up for grabs. Everything, everything is up for grabs. Uh, I have no, uh, I have no uh, stake in anything. Uh, every relativist has an agenda. Uh, and uh, and he, while he might want to seem open to all, uh, basically, it means there are some things that he's certainly cut out, uh, and uh, you know, 
the people who push relativism uh, uh, curric in curricular matters want what they want. And it's not that, you know, hey, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, to study the Renaissance is as good as studying, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the history of the maiden name of the uh, of the mothers of Yankee pitchers. I mean, yeah. I've thought of that one as a subject for a class. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you could learn something from it. I just made that up. <laughs> Lively academic imagination. Uh, some people also talk about. You've mentioned the term yourself, critical thinking, as the as the outcome that that liberal education gives you. And and often when they do that. Uh, they kind of also propose that it really doesn't matter how you come by that, you can come by that critical thinking in all sorts of different ways. And so Harvard, you know, famously had as part of the Accor whole series of courses not particularly related to each other, but supposedly they were there because they were all trained on the outcome of cultivating your critical thought. Uh, is that a chimera or is there something really to that? Is that part of liberal education? If Lots, I have lots of agreements and disagreements with the with the phrase and the thought critical thinking. Uh, uh, the I, I don't doubt that there are lots of ways to sharpen your mind. Uh, lots of them are in the liberal arts and lots of them out of the liberal arts. I mean, you could really sharpen your mind by uh, by by learning how to be an engineer. Be a doctor. Why? You want to build a sharp mind. Learn how to be a surgeon. You know, no fooling around. Uh, uh, you, you learn how to how to make serious and careful judgments that you have to defend in in lots of areas other than the liberal arts. Uh, uh, but to say that that anything could be a vehicle for the liberal for, for critical thinking, then at least to me says, well, then why not take the best vehicle instead of taking the moped? Why not why not take the uh, why not take the Mercedes? Uh, if you really want to, if you really want to learn the skills of rhetoric, why not study Abraham Lincoln? You know, uh, boy, you're going to learn an awful lot. You're going to learn how to think, and you're going to learn some very critical skills. Uh, and you'll learn a lot about an important man at an important moment in history. Exactly. Too. So there's constant exactly. there as well. So, 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 uh, if you want to learn how to be a critical thinker, why not use the best means of being a critical thinker. And you know what, the liberal arts historically have had wonderful ways of teaching you how to be a critical thinker. So you think if, if that's all it is, we say, there's a potpourri of courses here, but they're all going to teach you how to think critically, so we're doing our job in the liberal arts, you think it's a cop-out? It's a cop-out. It's a good way to put it. It's a cop-out. Uh, but I also have another problem with critical thinking. Uh, uh, the uh, critical thinking uh, somehow latches onto that word critical and 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 it uses it in, in an ambiguous way uh, it teaches critical can mean sharp uh, and it could also mean you know I I think I know better by now uh, I'm, I'm just critical of all kinds of things that went before me mm -hmm. uh, critical of all things other people say uh, and so critical tends to mean uh, Antinomianism, againstness. Uh, 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 we're going to have a critical study of American history. We're going to have a critical study of the uh, of George Washington or of the founding fathers or of Abraham Lincoln, and it winds up we're just going to find fault. We're going to be critical. We're going to see what the where the clay feet of clay are, and somehow the 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 liberal arts seem to relish in this criticalness of theirs, rather than to understand people as they understood themselves, to understand what they were up against, how they worked it out, what they tried to do, what they tried to accomplish. We could say, ah, three-fifths compromise, you know, ah, they just thought blacks were three-fifths of human beings. And, and, uh, and so you feel good. Criti critical thinking can make the thinker feel so good, so superior, so, so superb. Uh, and when they really haven't learned what the issues were, what the problems were. Uh, uh, I would, in fact, the liberal arts are getting the, uh, the, the reputation of being nothing but against the culture. Mm -hmm. In fact, I even just read in a co college catalog, uh, uh, critical, we will, we will teach you the liberal arts. The liberal arts are the, uh, will teach you critical thinking so you can stand against your 
politicians, your culture, your parents. They never say so you can stand against your uh, self or your professors uh, or your peer groups. Uh, uh, in fact, they always take the, the P's the wrong way. Uh, you should be, uh, critical thinking teaches you to, uh, to be critical of politicians, poets, poets priests, and sometimes <laughs> parents. Uh, whereas I think uh, critical thinking should teach you to be uh, critical of your peer group and your professors. Uh, they just have the wrong piece there, that's all. Uh, but no, I think critical thinking should, should uh, that the liberal arts should teach you to understand and to appreciate, as well as just to be critical. Should a liberal education be scrupulously neutral as to the conclusions to be drawn, or should it, should it transmit the uh, deposited wisdom? Uh, about certain things? Well, depends on what you're looking at. The longest time the liberal arts were thought to be the transmitters of culture. Then we got into our head, no, the liberal arts are, are much more for the individual. They have to teach you critical things. They have to teach you how to be an independent person, an independent scholar, an independent thinker. We're all well and good. And we've lost sight of the original, not, I don't want to say the, the original meaning, but at least a large portion of the meaning of the liberal arts, which is, we give you your, we give you your culture. That, you know, Shakespeare is no longer, is not dead. Uh, you know, thanks to the liberal arts, he's still alive. Uh, history is not dead, it is still alive. Uh, uh, culture is not dead. You, it's, the liberal arts are, such magic in a sense that that they can teach you to be an independent person and at the same time teach you the connectedness you have to all the great thinkers all the great uh, uh, artists all the great poets all the great uh, actors of the world before uh, I mean they there's this whole treasure chest that opens up and it says you know it's just not you on your own we haven't we're giving you this we're giving you so here, in, this, in these our studies is civilization for your enjoyment, for your, for your, for your thoughts, uh, uh, for your progress, uh, and you know, for your, for, your, for your country, for your civilization, for the world you live in. Uh, I think the liberal arts owe it to the world, not just to produce the next crop of critical thinkers, but to save for the world uh, the, the, the poetry, the literature, the philosophy, the thoughts, the acts of, of everything that went That's before. kind of predicated on the idea that if you present people with the richness of the past, mm -hmm. um, that by and large they're going to end up being able to make decent choices about what is worth abiding and what is oh, not. Turn it, turn it around, Steve. If they don't have the richness of the past, they're going to make lousy choices. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, uh, if you don't know what the Founding Fathers are trying to do in the Constitution, uh, you, you're not going to understand it. Uh, and then you'll think, you'll say, well, it's silly. I mean, I have no idea why they set up two branches of government. Gee, isn't that inefficient? I have no idea why there's checks and balances, why there's federalism, uh, why there's separation of powers. I have no idea. Why can't the, why do we have an independent judiciary? Why does the Bill of Rights not, uh, not talk about the rights I like and, and it talks about all these other rights that uh, who cares about? Uh, uh, why not understand what you have? rather than just have it and not understand it. And you'll, to have it without understanding it means you damn sight going to make a bad choice. Now for 10 years, or was it longer, that you were at the president of St. John's? Yeah, 10 years, 11 10 years. years yeah. 10, 10, 11 years. And I remember that's where I first met you. You were president of St. John's. Is that when we first met? I believe so. Um, it was a long time ago, uh, but not so long ago, uh, that its lessons uh, are, I'm sure, fresh in your mind. St. John's, for those who may not know St. John's and its approach to education, has a very distinctive type of academic program. Right. Uh, and maybe you could just briefly describe what that is. St. John's back in the 30s uh, decided that the way of teaching uh, undergraduates in the liberal arts was really defective. Uh, it was all done by textbooks. and. Uh, it's so what so-and-so was saying about what so-and-so said about so-and-so. 
And the thought came, uh, and it started even at the University of Chicago before it even came to St. John's, uh, uh, and the University of Virginia before it came to St. John's. And let's go back to the original sources of the liberal arts. Let's go back to the great books. May not be the best word, but it's a good enough of a phrase, but it's a good enough phrase, the great books. And so we're going to learn, we're not going to read about uh, Aristotle, we're going to read Aristotle. We're not going to read about Kant, we're going to read Kant. We're not going to read about Newton, we're going to read Newton. Uh, and so they set up a program where uh, uh, there was no intermediary between you and the, and the great thinker or the great actor or the great poet or the great philosopher. Uh, you would have a, a, a your own encounter with them. Uh, and so uh, you'd read Cicero, uh, you'd read Shakespeare, you'd read Milton, you'd read uh, uh, Flaubert. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and it was funny. We had all, all we had always done this in literature. You'd always read the read the book, the poem. Uh, but in, uh, in any other field, we rarely tended to do that. We always had people telling us what other people had said or done. Uh, uh, in science, we went through just not a textbook on science. Let's replicate all of the great scientific experiments. So let's start at the beginning. Start with Archimedes, let's say, and work your way uh, all the way up to uh, you know, to uh, Maxwell and Einstein. Uh, uh, in mathematics, go through all the uh, go through all the mathematical uh, uh, progressions, all the formula. Understand how uh, things went from uh, from geometry and then progressed to the calculus, and then went on from there. Uh, uh, it's an incredible education. Uh, it uh, it. Uh, I think it has certain limitations because it may it may seem to uh, to be bounded by this idea of books, uh, but it's but managed to work its way past that in lots of ways. Uh, uh, There's not much effort in this case to contextualize. You're no. really having the tradition stand on its own two intellectual feet. Remember before I said the important thing to, to do is to understand, try to understand, I'm not sure we always can, but try to understand people as they understood themselves. Well, the best way to do that is to go back and look at them, them they look at them themselves, see mm -hmm. what they said, what they did, uh, and, uh, and to ask them questions like, Thomas Jefferson, why did you say all men are created equal? I mean, I don't understand. I mean, look at the world around you. All you see is all you see is inequality. All you see is difference. And you're saying all men are created equal, endowed with inalienable rights. How could that be? T talk to me, Jefferson. Talk to me. Tell me. Uh, uh, unless you have that kind of grappling with the with the mind of the uh, of the of the author or of the of the poet or the philosopher, uh, all you're going to have is opinion. Uh, and generally, it'll be sort of off the wall or, or off-site opinion. Or, or, so or St. John opinion. student is kind of, should be at least, the paradigm case of what a liberally educated person is. Um, and kind of you had encounters with students. I, I know you taught as, as, as well as uh, acted as president. Um, they're a self-selected group of students to begin with, so it's not like a controlled experiment. But what do they do with their liberal educations? How does it affect their lives? I'm sure St. John's College is very interested in knowing this. <laughs> uh, what, what kind of impact does really getting a classic liberal education of that type, based on your own experience, lead you with? They do everything. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, many of them go with education. Uh, uh, University level or? Uh, both, mm -hmm. both. Uh, many of them go into law. Uh, uh, a lot of them uh, become entrepreneurs, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, because they do learn how to think for themselves, even though, they, even though they're studying the thoughts of others, uh, uh, that really does inform their own thoughts. And uh, I once said, I think I had a little bit of trouble for them, that St. John's produced uh, uh, the highest number of both entrepreneurs and bankrupts. Uh, in the in America, uh, people just go out on their own. Sometimes they fail, uh, but uh, the uh, uh, lawyers, judges. Uh, one of our famous alum, alumna, alum, alumni uh, owns one of the. In fact, many of our alumni now own some very spectacular wineries. Uh, uh, they just became interested in in uh, in 
the history and then science and then great, appreciation. Great, can great wines be kind of integrated into the curriculum? Is that a there was a time when we, when the seminars would have a glass of sherry or a bottle of sherry <laughs> passed around, but somehow the mores of the times uh, said we couldn't do that anymore. Uh, so no, we don't uh, uh, we don't do that. Well, here's a, here's a kind of timely and, and controversial question to kind of end our end our interview. You've spoken about the consequences. I'm not finished yet. Oh well, no, you, you can answer you can <laughs> answer the question at very great length. I okay, won't, I, won't, I won't stop you. Um, and it's somewhat apropos of, I suppose, what you were talking about yesterday. Uh, it's probably not the case, though I don't have doubt. It's probably not the case that the great majority of people who now lead our republic in various high positions, administrative and legislative and even judicial, it's probably not the case that they have had anything like the kind of liberal education that you've described. Um, just judging from what I know about the elite colleges and universities to which they tend to go. Um, do you see that looking at our public life? Uh, do you see that deficiency manifest in the conduct of our affairs? Uh, and of course, you know, um, back at the time of the founding, uh, even if uh, folk, someone hadn't, hadn't gone to a college or university, they had usually studied with a, a tutor if they had some affluence, had gone through the works, the great works of, of Greek and Greece and Rome, and in the 19th century, those who went to college did also tend to get a classical curriculum. Uh, do, do you see a, a, a difference uh, um, at, at the level of how uh, the kind of statesmanship we have and, and how our republic is led? That is a very hard question. Uh, and you can answer it at great length. <laughs> The more time you spend answering a question, therefore the less <laughs> sure of the answer you are, I've come to believe. Uh, interestingly, the people who have been some of the greatest leaders of this country, uh, many of them didn't have a liberal education. Uh, I mean, some of them did. James Madison, for instance. Uh, I know you've spent a lot of time at Princeton, a wonderful Princeton graduate. Uh, uh, I don't know that there was a smarter person or a finer person to lead the Constitutional Convention than James Madison. Thomas Jefferson, as liberally educated a man as the world has ever seen. Uh, uh, but George Washington, uh, not so. I mean, George Washington was a surveyor. Uh, 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 but his liberal education that he got well, well, let's put it this way. Well, he didn't get his liberal education from the classroom. Uh, he had to get it elsewhere, and he got it from uh, the Bible. I mean, we think of the Bible as a little tiny piece of liberal education. You're supposed to study that. Uh, and as I said before, not study about it, study it. Uh, and, uh, and everything from the... From, uh, what motivates people, to what God wants, to how society should be constructed, to what's good, what's bad. All of those issues came, uh, even the, when you read the King James, even the cadences of the King James help inform your public speech. Uh, uh, just a, just a, uh, 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 an education, whether it's formal or informal, in something like the Bible is a liberal education in itself. We seem to have lost that. We seem to have, that belongs in some other realm of learning. Lincoln could have been said to have well, had autodidacts liberal education. Lincoln said he went to school, uh, to school, not just to college, went to school he said he went by Littles, which means he made you know, a, a, a week here, a month there. Or he met up with the, the teacher. He, do, he doesn't think he, he he doesn't think he spent more than a year in a class in any classroom altogether. Uh, uh, so he never had more than a year of schooling. But he read everything, every single thing. I don't know that there was. Uh, 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 a biblical reference he didn't understand. Uh, there were uh, his his appreciation for, of all strange things, poetry. Uh, I and mean, it comes out in his speeches. I mean, his speeches are themselves, uh, the second inaugural is just a poem. The Gettysburg Address is a sort of a liturgical poem. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, he didn't get that by going, uh, to be liberally educated doesn't always mean you've gone to a liberal arts college. Uh, but it does mean that you've studied the, the, the subjects, the books, the works of the liberal arts. And Washington did that, and in spades, uh, Abraham Lincoln did that. Uh, uh, do we have that now? 
Uh, can you think of an important leader now who uh, you know to have had a liberal education? They all seem to have gone to Yale, but it doesn't <laughs> seem to have meant much. Uh, and and there, that was a cross cross uh, Republican Democrat comment. Uh, uh, no, we are really putting me on the spot there. Well, uh, it wasn't a question that I had great certainty you could answer, but I, but who knows? There, I, I don't know if. I, but 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 if we have the if 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 there has been this change, we now know what education higher education tends to be. We have certainly more people with with college degrees nowadays than we would have had a hundred or two hundred years ago. Um, do you see the loss of that in in the? Uh, in the nature of our affairs, our public affairs. I can't help but think, and not having any current examples mm -hmm. to point to, I can't help but think that people who are, uh, what, well, I'm a great admirer of Ronald Reagan, let me put it that way. Do I think Ronald Reagan could have been a better president? Yeah, of course he could have been. Do I think Ronald Reagan would have been a better president if he took one more course in Business in accounting, mm, maybe not. If Ron Reagan took one more course in world history, could he have been better? I, well, I bet it might have helped. Took one more course in American history, American political thought, would that have helped? I bet he would have found it to be useful. So even people I think who are very good, I think could have been improved by uh, uh, some of the things we teach in the liberal arts. Uh, do I think Barack Obama would be a better president if he knew more of Western civilization, American history, uh, history of religion? Uh, yes, I think he could be a much better president. Uh, so even if I can't find people who I would say are liberally educated and look at how wonderful they are, uh, uh, I think I can say, and maybe this is just a faith, maybe this is just an opinion and not a knowledge, not knowledge. I think they would all be approved by some of the things we teach when we teach those things seriously. Now, of course, we had four presidents um, at the beginning, or well, the first third of the 20th century, who unquestionably had strong liberal educations. Um, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Calvin Coolidge. They were all very, very different presidents. They absolutely were. Um, what does that say? I thought that was your last question before. Now you got a new one. You would spark me. <laughs> uh, you will. The first thing to know about the liberal arts is it's not a party line, and so you know the liberal arts uh, aren't going to make you a Tory or a or a, or a Laborite or a liberal or a conservative or a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, uh, it'll make you a more thoughtful. Tory or liberal or conservative or Democrat or Republican, I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, and I do think in, in, if I had to pick some people who I thought would I mean, if I take Senator Moynihan, I, I think a very uh, thoughtful uh, uh, person with a good liberal arts education uh, who really could make some important contributions even if I disagreed with him. Uh, uh, could probably, you know, even think of others, uh, uh, Senator Percy, uh, Henry Kissinger, Henry Kissinger, uh, uh, on very different sides of, of, of things, who are, uh, who at least didn't, could give arguments for what they were saying, and could give you reasons for what they were doing, uh, and, and, and made people who even were against them more intelligent, because uh, you had to come up to their level. Uh, so, uh, if we had, uh, if if we had a better liberal arts learning, would we have, uh, you know, would we have Winston Churchill to take a, a, a extraordinarily a liberally educated person? Uh, would we have Winston Churchill to year after year in this country? Of course not. Uh, but uh, uh, but it sure would be nice to have a Winston Churchill once in a while, you know. Well, uh, you're a Winston Churchill of academe. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and hence, it's been a great. Thank you very much for thank being you, with us. Thank you so much. Uh, and um, uh, we will uh, return in about a week or so uh, with the eminent philosopher of science, Susan Hack. Mm -hmm.